High school physics classes are where most people get their first exposure to electricity and magnetism. And one of the first things you learn is finding the force between two point charges. It's just Coulomb's law, f is equal to kq1 q2 over r squared, where k is the Coulomb's constant. And the force is directed between the two charges, which the r hat indicates. As an extension of that, finding the force between a point charge and an infinite line of uniformly distributed charge is also usually taught. To get this force, we can simply integrate Coulomb's law by breaking the line into point charges, or use Gauss's law, which is of course an equivalent process. And lastly, we also usually learn how to find the force between a point charge and an infinite plane of uniformly distributed charge. We can integrate the expression for the force from a line charge, or just use a Gaussian pillbox. Now in all these cases, one of the key conditions that made finding the force relatively simple, which is good for examples in a high school class, was that we assumed the uniform charge distributions were unaffected by the presence of the charge. In other words, these examples take insulating lines or planes. So what about conductors? What if we had an infinite conducting plane? What would be the force between it and the point charge? Now at first glance, this seems really nasty. The charge distribution is not yet known because the charges are free to move on a conductor, so it seems like we'd have to find that and then do a probably ugly integral over the entire surface. It turns out, however, that there is a simple solution to this problem, but its explanation is usually brushed over with something along the lines of the boundary conditions work. So in this video, I'll tackle this problem using only concepts from high school physics for a simple, intuitive explanation. Let's just start by making some observations using the properties of conductors. First of all, we can try to make a guess at the charge distribution. Right below the positive charge, we'll expect a lot of negative charge, since of course they attract. And we'll probably expect less and less negative charge going farther out, since farther from the charge means a weaker force and weaker inducing effects. That's the charge distribution, so now let's try to guess at what the electric field looks like. At least on the top half, we know that the electric field is perpendicular to the plate at all points, since if there was a horizontal component, that would accelerate any charges on the surface of the conductor sideways, since they are free to move, making it non-static. Or another way of thinking about it is that the electric field is the negative gradient of the potential, and since the conductor is an equipotential or level curve, the gradient is perpendicular to it. And also right around the charge, we probably expect it to look something like the field of a point charge, since close to it, nothing else far away really matters. Let's sketch the field lines for what we have so far. Now let's figure out the field in the remaining half, inside the conductor and on the other side. In the conductor, we know there should be zero electric field, since it's a conductor. The field would accelerate any charges on the inside, making it non-static. Now what about the field on the other side? Maybe the field lines come back out the way they came in. So let's see what happens if this occurs. We can follow the field to this point, and now at this point, let's consider Gauss's law. Since there is no charge here, the flux through this small circle is zero, meaning that there must be a vector pointing out, since there's a field coming in. So we can now follow the field to the next point, and again here, if we consider Gauss's law, there must be some direction with an outward field. So we can keep going along this path. But where does this path end? Well, it must end somewhere where there is charge by Gauss's law, or go out to infinity. Well, the only charge it can end on is somewhere on the plate, but that doesn't make any sense as the potential is decreasing all along the path. And if it ends at infinity, it again doesn't make sense as the plate must be at the same potential as infinity since it extends out to infinity, but the path is of decreasing potential. So there can't be an electric field because there's no place for the path to end. This is known as electrical shielding. And we could also consider a negative charge instead of a positive charge and everything would be the same, just all the directions and signs flipped like so. Now with these two, I claim that we have everything to be able to find the force easily. No integrals. Go ahead and pause the video if you would like to figure it out for yourself. As a hint, consider the idea of superposition. So here's the trick. We take the negative charge setup and rotate it 180 degrees and place it on the positive charge setup. We've already established that on the sides opposite from the charges, the field is zero, so the field on the positive charge side of the plate shouldn't change, meaning that with this new setup, the force on the positive charge remains the same. 
Now, what happens with the plate? Well, we can see all the charges cancel since it's perfectly symmetric. So our problem of finding the force between the conducting plate and the charge is completely equivalent to this new problem of two-point charges, which we definitely know how to handle. The force is just given by Coulomb's law. So if the charge is a distance d away from the plate, the force is simply kq squared over 4d squared toward the plate. We're just finding the force from a reflected image charge, and this process is called the method of images. Well, actually, it's really just a special case. The idea about boundary conditions that I mentioned earlier is a way to generalize it to other cases like spherical conductors or magnets. But even if it is just a special case, I think it's worth diving into some of the details like we did, because when you just say that's how the math works, you miss some of the ideas going on, making it just a mathematical trick. Anyways, that's it for this video. Happy holidays, and thanks for watching.